Today on our menu of activities, we're going to be solving quadratic equations with the quadratic formula. Drink to that. Can't wait for it to get warmer. Uh, enjoy the snow while you can. It starts to melt tomorrow. Supposedly. Friday, if not tomorrow. OK, yes, this is what we're going to do. But before we use the quadratic formula, we are going to use the square root principle. We used that a little bit last time. We're going to use it more now. You use the square root principle when you have a quadratic binomial and you don't have the linear term, the power one term. Instead, you jump right from the second degree term to the zero degree term. That's when you use the square root principle and it's very, very fast, which is another very good thing about the square root principle. OK, so here we have a quadratic equation. Let's do this. Let me make sure I'm recording. Yes. Thank you, McAfee, not now. OK. So we're going to have 3x squared plus 21 equals 0. And I'm writing it like this because we have to pull out a GCF first. There just happens to be one here. OK, so we have we have a three in both terms. I write it down in front and then mark it out. That can help. You don't have to do that. And I write my leftovers. All right, there I go. That's what I've got so far. Now, mm, got chewing gum. Now, because, because I have an equation, which means I can do the same, I keep saying it over and over again, but I'm just trying to underline that if, if I had something like this, 3x squared plus 21, and that's all I had, and the instruction said factor. Then that's precisely what I would do. And I've got it as far as I can go. If the instructions had said factor, notice I do not have an equal sign on the right and, and I do not have equals anything so I can't solve it. But that is not what I have. This is what I have with instructions that say solve, which means I have to get X equals. There's an equal sign. I think of it as stuff on the left equals, has to be an equal sign, other stuff. on the right. That is an equation. Stuff equals stuff. When I have that, I can divide out my GCF because I don't need it. What is, after all, my job? My job is to find out what X equals. I can do this as long as there's not an X 
in the GCF. If there were an X in the GCF, I could not do it because I would lose one of my answers, one of my solutions. And then I would get the problem wrong. So that's why there is no X there. There is just a three. That's great. So now I have this equation, X squared plus seven equals zero. Now I'm going to use the square root principle. I subtract seven. Let's do it this way. I subtract seven from both sides of the equation. Well, that's zero. So I have x squared equals zero minus seven is negative seven. Now I have to solve for x, not x squared. So I take the square root of both sides of the equation. And that's what I've got right now. Why the plus or minus? We went over this on Monday. But just do it. You're going to notice that that plus minus in front of the radical is also in the quadratic formula. Um, okay, so where were we? The square root of x squared is x equals plus or minus. There's a negative underneath the square root radical, which means we're not in the real number system anymore. We're in the complex number system. Okay, now the square root of negative one is I. So now we get down to what this means. <coughs> what this means is X equals two complex numbers. X equals negative I times the square root of seven and X equals positive I times the square root of seven. So in the answer box where you have X equals and then you have the answer box, you write negative I times the square root of seven, positive I times the square root of seven. Or if you have the plus minus symbol in the toolbar down at the bottom, bottom of the screen when you're in my math lab, once you click on the answer box, you see the toolbar appear. If this is in the toolbar, then you can usually write your answer like this. Um, 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 blue. Like that. Now let's go into something we've already dealt with, and that is when the instructions say, I'm going to have to move that because I have more room on the left. If the, I'm going to write in blue because these instructions are usually blue, you have the answer box 
And then you have the instructions that say, uh, uh, write your answer or type your answer. In A plus B I form. If, and I'm going to put a box around this, kind of a box, a barrier, how about that? If the instructions underneath the answer box say that, then this is how you would state the answers. Let's try in here. Zero plus minus the square root of seven and then I on the outside of, it has to be on the outside of the square root side. You could also write, see you've got so many choices here. It depends on what you feel more comfortable with. Since it doesn't matter, you could write zero minus the square root of seven I comma zero plus the square root of seven I. This and this are exactly the same. Now let me finish off the answer box there. So you have these choices. If it says answer with A plus BI, you've got to answer with A plus BI, but you do have this option or this option. And if it doesn't say answer with A plus BI, it will say um, give your answers in terms of I. So let's write that down. Um, type, type, I guess type. Type your answers in terms of I. It means you can do this, this is not wrong, but it also means you can be a little lazy and do it this way. Give your answers this way or this way. And the little robot in my math lab will say, thank goodness they did it the short way like I said. If there were a little robot. Okay, questions about this? There probably are some. Okay, if you can think of it, feel free to blurt it out. Here we have another quadratic equation in which you have the degree two term and the degree zero term. In other words, you have um, a, a power two term and uh, you have a constant term. Well, first thing I'm going to do is factor out a GCF. Then I'm going to uh, divide out the GCF. Then I'm going to solve the equation with the square root method. Okay. All right, so 4x squared minus 28 equals zero. I made um, a marker that's gray, so it would look like a pencil. Got to entertain yourself somehow. I also thought it might be helpful. All 
right, here's my GCF. I pull it out to the front, then I mark it out. Okay, now I divide out the four because I have an equation and because there's no X pulled out with the four. Now I add seven, I'm going to solve for the X term. So I have X squared equals seven. Now I take the square root of X squared and the plus or minus square root of seven. Notice there is no negative under there. This is a real number, it's in the real number system. Therefore, my answer can just be this. If the plus minus symbol is in the toolbar, if not, Um, ah, there. Okay, again, just blurt out any questions you might have. Correct. I think I might have a question. Yes, good. Um, so this does this second answer doesn't have an I because we didn't because of the negative one from the previous one. Right. No, this this is this is a positive seven. So when we take the square root of it, there is no negative sign in front of the seven. Okay. That Got makes it a real number. So okay, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. We get to yeah. treat it like any old real number. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, another one, because you just can't do too many when you're learning. Body memory and all that. Okay, 5x squared plus 10 equals zero. So we're gonna have five times x squared plus two times five equals zero. Each term has a five. Okay. Then I divide out the five. So I have x squared plus 2 equals 0. Now I have to solve for x, so I will subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. That leaves me with x squared, 2 minus 2 is 0, equals 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So I take the square root of both sides of the equation. 
making sure to put the plus or minus sign in front of the square root of negative two. And so I have X equals plus or minus the square root of negative two is negative one times two. So I'll have X equals plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of two. And so that will be plus or minus I times the square root of two because I equals the square root of negative one. That's what it is. And there's always that other possibility, zero minus the square root of two I zero plus the square root of two I. This would be correct in any case, but certainly would be the only right answer if you're being asked to give your answer in A plus B I form. Okay, we went over this on Monday too when we were doing uh, uh, solving solving uh, quadratic equations by factoring because the square root principle often necessitates factoring. And we did indeed factor here by GCF. But there comes a time when you do new stuff, which isn't really new stuff for you guys because you did this in, in intermediate algebra, but here's the college algebra part right here. We're going to use the quadratic formula to find the zeros of the function. What function? This function right here. So first we have to look at the quadratic formula and second, we have to do it. Okay, so here's the quadratic formula and it's kind of a rule that math teachers need to sing it to you. So I'm gonna sing it to you even though I do not have a great singing voice. Okay, give me a minute here. Let me write it down. Well, I'll write it down as I say it. Um, let's put it over here. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. There you go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over 2a, where a is 1, b is negative 7, and c is 9. So let's write those down. a equals 1, b equals negative 7, and c equals 9. So looking up here, I'm going to have X equals negative B. B is negative. Whatever B is comes after the negative sign. 
plus or minus the square root. B is negative. Minus four times one times nine. Pull out your radical symbol to cover everything under the radical. all over two times one. Um, okay, so I'm I, I wanna I wanna turn it off. I forgot to do that. There. Now it won't bother me. All right, so x equals negative, negative seven is positive seven, plus or minus the square root. Negative seven squared is positive 49. Minus four times one times nine is 36. All, whoop, all over two. Well, I don't really need it to be that long, but oh well. Better. Okay, so seven plus or minus the square root of nine minus six is three and four minus three is one. Okay, all over two. That's it. it. This is a real number. There's no negative under the radical. So we don't have to worry about writing this in A plus BI form. We can leave the answer like this. Or, so let me put it in a blue box. That's if the plus minus symbol is in your toolbar. And if it's not, or if for some reason my math lab burps and says it doesn't like that answer, then just give it what it wants and do this. Seven minus the square root of 13 over two, comma, seven plus the square root of 13 over two. Do not put these in parentheses. It's not a point. You're listing the two zeros of the function. But it looks like x equals. That's precisely what the zeros of the function are. And I will show you the relationship between zeros of the function and x-intercepts. If the instructions had said, and sometimes they do, they say, give me the zeros. So here are the zeros. And then it says, give me the x-intercepts. I don't think it says this here, but it will elsewhere. Um, right, okay. Here we go. Parentheses, seven minus the square root of 13 over two, comma zero. That's your left x-intercept, comma, parenthesis, seven, whoop, whoop, It's all over two. You've got to put that uh, fraction bar all the way out to the f to where this is. To the B number, yeah. All right, now seven plus the square root of 13 
over two comma zero. That's the difference between the zeros of a function and the x-intercepts of a function. These are points on the x-axis. These are numbers on the x-axis. These are the generators, and you're, you're going to be doing this, not right now, but later. Uh, these actually generate this polynomial. It's wild. It's cool. Okay, so put me in your head as horrible as that might be, at least temporarily, as long as you're taking math classes. Have me in there singing badly the uh, quadratic formula song. Sing it to yourself every night before you go to sleep. Teach your children to sing it to themselves as a little uh, nursery rhyme. Then they'll never forget it. These are the zeros of the function. These are the x-intercepts of the graph of the function. We're going to do it again. Oh, 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 oh. We're supposed to also put these in um, 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 the calculator and, and uh, round the solutions to three decimal places. OK. Now, all this problem is really asking for is the zeros. So I'm going to put this in my calculator, but I have to do it in a particular way. So watch. And then I'm going to put this in the calculator. So you turn it on. Something I often forget to do when I'm recording and I'm punching away and, oh, I didn't turn it on. Okay. Probably you wouldn't have that problem. Here I go. Now watch carefully what I do. I have to put I have to put the numerator in parentheses when I'm using the calculator. So, left parenthesis 7 minus the square root which is above the x squared key of 13. Now, Take your right arrow key here on the calculator and click it so that you're on the outside of the radical, then click the right parenthesis. Then divide by two. I'm supposed to round that to three decimal places. Okay, um, right. So this will be the second step. And you write, you write the decimal answers with a comma in the middle. So this will round to 1.697. That two is not big enough to cause the seven to round up to an eight. And then I'm going to do uh, uh, put that in the calculator and get an estimate. OK. Left parenthesis 7 plus second x squared. That gives me the square root sign 13. Right arrow key to move to the outside of the radical. Right parenthesis. Um, divided by two enter okay five point ah look at this three decimal places one two three the fourth decimal place is a seven and that will cause 
the two to round up to a three. These are estimates of the zeros of the function. Okay, let's look at what we did. Um, I found the exact answers, and I either wrote them together with the plus minus sign or separately. Let me erase this. And then I think I'm going to take a picture. Put this in your notes also so you can see it. Okay. <gasps> Forgot about that. Let's do another one. Same instructions. Find the zeros of the function, give exact answers, and approximate solutions rounded to three decimal places when possible. Okay. So I'm not going to sing it this time. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, where A is 1, B is 5, and C is negative 3. Okay, so X, ah, ah, yeah, X, sorry, equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared. Notice I, I don't put the number in parentheses. When it's positive, there's no reason to. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 3 all over 2 times 1. So this is going to be X equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25. We have negative 4 times 1, that's negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12 over 2. So that will be X equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 plus 2 is 7, 2 plus 1 is 3, 37. And I'm just making sure I copied everything correctly. Okay, over 2. Well, 37 is a prime, so I can't go any further. So the zeros are x equals, and then we'll have the box, negative 5 plus minus the square root of 37 over 2, 
or These are the exact answers for the zeros of the function. Now our approximations Barbara, just be calm. Not yet. All right, here we go. Left parenthesis, negative five minus the square root of 37, right, right arrow, parenthesis, divided by two, Double checking, enter. And let me do it first. Negative, oh, uh, uh, no, gotta have a parenthesis there. Negative sign five plus the square root, second x squared, 37, right arrow key, parenthesis divided by two, enter. Okay, now I'm gonna copy that here and then I will round. Now, we're told to round to three decimal places. So in this first answer, my first, second, third decimal place are 541, followed by a three which is not large enough to make the one round up to a two. So my first answer is going to be negative 5.541. Comma. And then my second answer is going to be 0 0.541 followed by a three, and the three is not large enough to make the one round up to a two. So zero, you don't really have to put the zero point there. Five, four, one. You do need the point, and you do need the five, four, one. So those are my approximate answers. Anything you have to round in a calculator is approximate. It's not exact. So this is the approximate. Approximate answers are estimations. And these are the exact answers, the exact zeros. OK. Now, you can do that. I'm concerned about the word problems. Let's get to those. Unless you have questions about these, the square root principle and working with the, um, um, the doohickey, the quadratic formula. Mr. Adamaker. Mr. Adamaker, yes, I have a calculator question. Sure. 
Going back to the quadratic formula and finding the zeros. Yes. When I type it into my calculator, I'm getting a different answer. OK, the reason for that probably is you're not putting your parentheses. That makes all the difference. We'll try again. OK. Which problem are you on? Um, this one? That, yeah, that one's dead. Yeah, I'll type it in just like that. Good. So, I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't put my 37 completely under the square root. Does that, is that making a difference? Um, I am going to stop sharing my screen and maybe I can see you. If not, I'll show you. How. Oh, I do see it. All right, wait oh, a minute. Okay, sorry. A minute. Uh, no, no, that was a, oh, I'm surprised. <laughs> okay. Yes, all right. When when you, here, would you hold it? Yeah, look at oh. it. When, when you close, when you close the parentheses on your 37, you did not close the parenthesis in front of negative five. So you're going to need to add another parenthesis there. Okay. Parentheses, negative five, parentheses. M minus. No, no, here, let me show you. Let me show you. Okay. Sorry. Here. No, no, no. It's another, it's another um, version of the same thing. So let me see, actually, I think if I go to mode, I can go back to classic. Yes, and then I can do this for you. Parentheses. Negative five minus second x squared. See, I've got what you've got now. 37. Parentheses. Parentheses. Uh. Divided by 2. Am I sharing my screen? Can you see it? Let me... Um, no, ma'am. Okay, let me share my screen. There. Let me do it again. Parentheses, parenthesis, negative five minus the square root of 37. Now I have to close the parentheses on the 37 but then I also have to close the parentheses from the very front, so I have to put in another set of parentheses and then divide by two. Got it, negative 5.54, okay. Okay, awesome. every time, Every time you have a left parenthesis, you have to also have a right parenthesis. So this, after you type the 37, you've got the left parenthesis. Don't got it. Here, my computer is going crazy. Um, <laughs> all right, stop that, stop that, all right. This parenthesis at the beginning has to have a parenthesis closing at the end. And this parenthesis in front of the 37 has to have a parenthesis after the 37. So that's the okay. reason you sometimes need two parentheses. Okay, awesome, thank you. Okay, good luck. Let me know if there are any further problems. Sure, have why a good weekend. Try, why don't you try the other one? while you're here. OK. Seven. 
But if it's a positive, then I don't need two parentheses, maybe? Um, I bet you do. Let me do it, too. Okay. All right, parenthesis negative 5 plus second x squared. See, I'm still going to have to put the 37 in parentheses. So here's the parenthesis for the 37. Now here's the parenthesis for the negative 5. So if if I'm looking at the first problem we did, the positive 7 minus square root 13, should I put two parentheses? You would have to, yes. Let, okay. let me do it on my screen. So, parenthesis seven plus second x squared 13. Now, close the, the first parenthesis, I mean, close the parenthesis in front of the 13 and close the parenthesis in front of the seven. And then divide by whatever we were dividing by. Two. So it was two. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Do you have a new calculator? What kind of calculator do you have? Uh, no, I think it's pretty old. <laughs> the okay. TI-84. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is a TI-84, so do something for me before you go, okay? Okay. Click on the mode button. Okay. Now, come down, 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 down. See, see full is at the end, but if you keep clicking down, you go to, do you have math print there and classic? It doesn't go that far. After full, it goes to the clock. Okay. All right. Well, then, yes. You're yes. kind of stuck with that. Yeah. Okay. But you see, you can make it work for you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for your help. That's great. Do let me know if you have any more problems. Sounds good. Bye. Bye-bye. Be safe.